All right, you guys like the movie, right? Yeah. Right? It's a good movie. I would like to bring back to the stage Toby Hallbrooks and James M. Johnson, producers of this film. Come on up. I told you they loved the film. Good. <laughs> I hadn't heard anything. <laughs> so uh, we were just talking a little bit in the lobby about it. So I, I wanted to find out, before we go to questions from the audience, like, uh, what was Robert Redford like? This guy's a legend. Loves the New York Times. <laughs> Loves the New York Times. All right, that's all we need to know. Uh, okay, moving on. He's um, as lovely as you would imagine. Yeah. He's really cool. Um, very approachable um, for, for, I mean, he is a living legend, but he doesn't necessarily carry himself that way. Oh, no, no, he's wearing tie-dye and bandanas on his head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Motorcycles to set. There's a good, we were, we went to a Cincinnati Reds game with him and uh, got into an elevator with a couple people and somebody was like, you look just like him. He's like, yeah, I get that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he's aware. He's aware of it. The New York Times is a reference to when Bob got to set in the morning, mm -hmm. he would have New York Times, and he would start on page one, and throughout the day as we were shooting, he would read every single line of the paper, and when, we got to, when he got to the end of the paper, he was done. So we knew <laughs> that we had timed our shoot based on how fast he was reading that New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> that's a guy that's been on a lot of sets before. Like, he knows how to time that stuff out. He does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Sissy Spacek, I met, is just the most wonderful person. I'm sure you... she is um, a ball of light. Just, uh, I mean, she made everybody happy. Yeah. Like just being around her, we kind of wanted her to just when she was done shooting, we kind of wanted her to just stay and hang out with us. Yeah, <laughs> we want to make more movies with her. <laughs> she's amazing. I mean, we we are actively looking for other projects to do with her because she's beyond amazing. Taking fashion tips and everything. Yeah. Fashion tips. No hats, she said. So, <laughs> so no hats. What about that? No, I didn't, I didn't build up to that joke or anything. I just <laughs> think so. That's a pretty sharp shirt, too, you got on there, I gotta say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I am Beto. <laughs> you look different in person. It's actually. You look yeah. taller. <laughs> I wonder if we have any questions from our audience who just uh, enjoyed this wonderful film with us. Right over here, yeah. Uh, the question I had the second it started was whose idea was it to start it with? This too is also. That was all David. That was in the script. Yeah. That was in the script. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Uh, the beginning of the movie says this story is also mostly true or something like that, um, and that's from Butch Cassidy. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, not not the also part. Yeah. That's a deep cut, deep reference for this movie that maybe there's there's few also people have seen. Maybe. A reference to the sting. Did anyone notice that? Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Yep. Yeah, so when we're talking about David Lauer, you're talking about a guy that knows movies up and down, and you guys too, I'm sure. Absolutely. So you see yeah. these references, it's all it's all in there. Yeah, none of us went to film school. We just all are film nerds, I guess you would say, that started making movies ourselves. I want, I want to get some more film nerd questions from the audience, but I have one quick film nerd question of my own because I can't resist. So it's fairly common practice for when a filmmaker is making a movie with a particular sort of stylized feel to show cast and crew maybe another film or a couple of other films to draw inspiration from. What were, were, were there any of those? I mean, two lame black tops, always something that we yeah. have to sit down and watch whenever we start making a movie with him. Two lame black top, um, Friends of Eddie Coyle. Yeah. Even yeah. though this isn't as, this is obviously meant to be more fun than yeah. that, yeah, yeah. but that was one. Um, what you call it? Hard Time. Uh, Dustin Hoffman film. Straight Time. Straight Time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Some film nerd. Yeah, uh, but, but I've never seen it. I don't th even those are all films that were a stylistic inspiration, but yeah. not necessarily a tonal inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see that. Yeah, yeah. Right over here. So how did Tom Waits get involved? Luck. <laughs> yeah, we just. I mean, you have to call and leave a message. Kind of looks like Steve, Steve Wertheimer too. Perfect. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, we just, we had a wish list. You know, once we knew it was happening and Bob was doing it, we were emboldened, because it's like, I mean, we got a legend, so we can just ask anybody we want to be in this. Um, and, and of course, 
you know, after, but, but Tom, everyone else and Bob was like, immediately was like, of course I'll do this. And Tom was like, well, let me think about this. <laughs> and, and he took a while to like, wow. I mean, his, his kids were calling us and saying, this is an amazing project. We're telling him he needs to do this. And he's like, well, I'm thinking about it. Um, and, but eventually, obviously he said yes. <laughs> There's no way David Lowry wrote that Christmas tree story. That's that's got right. to be Tom Waits, right? That that is so Tom is actually a very studious actor. Like he likes he doesn't like to improv. He he practices his lines, he practices his movements, like he's really serious about it. But that was the one time David he, he told that story and David was like, This is really great. Would you mind doing this in the movie? Because that's a real story. Like, that's based on his life. And, I mean, yeah, he told that story prior to. Yeah, I mean, he told us that story, and David was like, this is great, would you, would you do something like that in the movie? And he's like, well, I can just do that story. And he was like, all right, let's do it. So that was only improv in the film, really. That story really encapsulates the whole hero's journey. It's straight out of Joseph Campbell, really, I think. Yeah. So. <laughs> something David's deeply concerned with as a filmmaker. <laughs> Oh, we're going to do the questions. Right over here, yeah. You know, funny you should point that out. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, we did, but obviously Bob helped make that pretty easy for us. Yeah. It's tedious, I can tell you that. But everybody was super jazzed once they saw where it was going, and, and meaning the rights holders of those pictures, they're like, yeah. Oh my God, that's one of the great moments in the movie too. When you when you see that, you're like, oh, that's actually from uh, from what the the chase. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so you felt nervous. Um, I wonder if you have any questions from our audience over here. Don't Anybody got a question? Uh, I'll just ask another. Yeah, yeah. So I know since it was a wish list, you all wrote Paul Newman down in spirit, right? It's a wish list. <laughs> I mean. I, that's who I was channeling in my part, which I'm sure you didn't notice or you blinked and what missed it. What was your it. part? I don't want to know. I, I was a heavy metal parking lot dude. Oh, man, I wish you could hear all the dialogue. It was really solid. Like, everybody's blushing. I'm not going to act for you. But, like, we played it for a test audience just early on in, in where were we, in Sherman Oaks, and they had it jacked up and, like, Everybody was rolling because it was such a crazy, funny line and thing to hear while Bob's walking across <laughs> that it was just way too distracting. But it was really good, trust me. We'll, we'll wait for like the. Uh, Sorry to take your Paul Newman question. Yeah, I mean, we all miss him. <laughs> he was not available for the, this call. Not available. I wonder if we have a. I think I saw another hand. Somebody said back. Keith Carradine. Him. Anything about it? Oh, he's just the best. He's amazing. We worked with him on Ain't the Body Saints. He, he, you know, as as happens with films, he originally, and he was in on all this. Um, he originally had a bigger part in this film, but as the edit came together, just you know, things changed. But he was he's very he was very aware from of, aware of that from the beginning, that the part was, you know, could change in the edit. But he. He, I mean, luckily for us, he just liked us and liked hanging out with us when we made Anything Body Saints. And he was like, look, I don't care if it's a small part. I'll come hang out with you guys and work on this because it's like, duh, it's Robert Redford and Sissy Space and Casey. So. Great dude. Also yeah. a great dude. Super great dude. And if you haven't seen Anything Body Saints, he does a song in it. I mean, he's he's great. Yeah, he's a wonderful actor. And in, in, in fact, like, if you're just like, if you'd said, hey, do you guys want to make a movie with Keith Carradine? You'd probably be like, yes, yes, yes. That's true. That, yeah, he's you know, amazing. Layering on this much sort of legendary, you know, magic is incredible. It's just almost too much. Um, I wonder if we have like I saw a hand in the back. Yeah, in the back. I have an arcane question. Who um, picked the song? Was this you on the game? Oh, it was also in the script. Yeah, David, David wrote it in there. Um, yeah, from and the, that was always meant for that sequence. Yeah, that's such a it's such a deep choice. It's such a great perfect choice for that moment. And that's a big scene, you know, like that's a big Redford scene in the movie, so. Yeah, it was definitely one of the first things that we saw. He had cut that together and it was like, oh, this all works. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Uh, I would have one last question from our audience here. I saw a hand right over here. Oh, yeah. I just, um, cause I just saw it in the credits. The guy that Casey Fleck played, the real guy. Uh, John, John Hunt, Hunt, yeah. He was in this movie? He is in the movie, yeah. He plays um, the guy that, well, he didn't have a cat. In the script, he had a cat, but he was the guy that during the escape montage, the last escape, and he was like, hey, Forrest, you ready to go? You ready to go to lunch? 
Yeah, and he was, we just did the, the premiere in New York and he was at the premiere and it was really amazing. He got to walk the red carpet with his wife. And he He'd never to, been to New York. He'd never been, yeah, and he got to stand up, you know, and get recognition. It was pretty amazing. Although he is worried that like all of his old friends are gonna make fun of him for having a movie made about him. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Casey Affleck, how great is, I mean, there's so many just great scenes in this, but that scene in the bathroom where they uh, run yeah. into each other. Oh, that's... That scene is, there's all sorts of backstory to that scene, but um, it was a late addition. Um, and yeah, I don't know how... Well, yeah. you, you know, it's like the characters have to meet at some point. Yeah. And it's like, how do you make it to where, I don't know, David just did an amazing job of figuring out the tone to where like they could go face to face and Casey doesn't just slap cuffs on him or chase him. Yeah. And like convincing, well, whatever, it's not like a... Every movie is a battle, um, and it wasn't like, oh, this is we're explosive and this is a big problem. But like, telling, like, teaching everybody how stories work and how that actually people will understand it, that it makes sense that he didn't have to run after the bad guy. And it's, I'm glad it's in there. And it, I don't know, there's, it's rare you get a, we don't make a bunch of movies that have like movie moments, yeah. and that's a big one. That's like, a, yeah, it really is. And that's one of the funnest scenes to sit in and be with the audience in because universally everyone will like just like leans forward in their seat and is wondering what's gonna happen. And I just love, I think Casey was truly flabbergasted because that was literally his first day on set and his first day meeting Bob face to face. <laughs> and so I think that he was a little flabbergasted in real life as well as the character in that moment. So it sort of worked out great. Oh, it's perfect. I, but I, I, yeah, that face is so good. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. And remember what we said at the beginning, social media, let people know. And then just, here's an old fashioned thing you can do. Just walk up to your friends at work tomorrow and go, I saw a great movie last <laughs> Do night. people work? Yeah, I mean, this is still, this is still an independent film. In yeah. spite of all the legendary actors in it, it's, it's an independent film. And uh, you know, it's gonna live or die by yeah, people telling about it to that. So let yeah. people know if you enjoy it. So we it. need you guys to talk about it. And we need you guys to keep making great movies. So we'll do thanks best. so we'll much. Try. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, everybody.